So Jake Paul uh, obviously is the talk of the town. Pretty much every video we do here on the channel, it seems like, has something to do with Jake Paul um, or MMA. Obviously, MMA being my focal point. But Jake Paul has been the main attraction here over the last couple of weeks. And in one of our last videos, we debated who would Jake Paul's next opponent be. Now, I came to the conclusion, much like a lot of us did, surprisingly to me, that that should be Dylan Dennis, the MMA fighter from Bellator. But... There are some people that are still saying that it should be KSI, and I'm sure at some point it will be KSI, and that fight's going to be huge. It's going to be massive. But we didn't have a lot of, of sparring footage, uh, just strictly boxing for Dylan Danis, other than the two fights he's been in, and those were very quickly over with. Um, so I thought, why not? Let's take a look at one of Jake Paul's potential opponents in the future. And the one thing in the comments you guys would keep saying I need to watch is the KSI versus Faye Sensei spar. Apparently that is the one. That is is prime KSI, prime JJ in his boxing element. So let's get into this thing. Let's see if KSI has any strengths that he can use against Jake. Maybe exploit some of the weaknesses we've already pointed out with Jake. Him, you know, kind of overthrowing and you know holding his hands a little lower. Or if there's any weaknesses that KSI has that Jake can exploit. KSI being a wild puncher, someone that doesn't necessarily have the greatest technique, from what I remember. But listen, maybe I'm talking out of turn. We're gonna have to watch and see. Let's go. There they go. Here's round one. They touch him up, and here we go. KSI aggressive, working the body. You saw how he posted on the uh, on the back of the head, and then threw the right hand over the top. That's nice. Watch post right there. Boom. Parried a little bit there by by Face Sensei. KSI very active as far as just pressure forward. You can see that right away. I mean, the game plan was was pretty simple here, right? Look at him trying to cut the ring off. Face Sensei trying to do his best. I don't think that he's necessarily doing Logan here. I think he's just in there just fighting KSI. Oh, nice counter right hand, even though it's kind of slappy. Right here. A little, a little slappy right hand, but it lands, lands all the same. Oh, nice jab. Both guys trade right there. Face Sensei's got great footwork. Look at that. Slip roll under there. This is definitely pace uh, over over technique for KSI. Now, I'm not saying he doesn't have any, but, I mean, look at how he throws this. We're in round one. I don't know how he, how much he's been sparring this day or how much work he's done, but look at this combination he kind of throws walking forward with his hands down on face sensei. Like, look right here. Look at the way he throws that right hook. He just kind of kind of just tosses it out there, nothing really behind it, and now he's in a bad position, right? now. Now his feet are very close together. He can't move around a little bit. Faze, obviously, the, the, the hook over the top would be nice here if, you, if he let that left hand go. Looks like he wants to parry that right hand anyway in that Philly shell, right? He's here. He wants to parry that. Left hook over the top. KSI just kind of walking forward right here. Nice. There's the left hook. There's what I'm talking about right here. Bang. That's what I'm looking for. He lands it, but KSI again, moving forward. Trying to weaponize pace. Trying to weaponize cardio. Nice shot to the body from KSI. Sensei utilizing the jab. Oh, that was a nice cheeky little uppercut. Face Sensei, look at this. Rolls that shoulder, bink, and slides out of the way. That's nice. That's nice work. You can see the strategy here from KSI's camp, and this is right before the Logan fight, weaponize pace. And I know they had worked on this for, I mean, for the first fight especially, and then, you know, leading into the second one, they'd seen it worked. So now they're like, okay, we're really going to push the pace on this guy because in that first fight, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Logan got gassed quick, uh, fast, and in a hurry after rounds one and two. He was he was on wobbly legs, especially in that last round. So they wanted to, to, to go back to the well. Listen, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that looks like that's, that's the game plan here. Use KSI's dog mentality, his ability to be a dog, his ability to just continue to walk forward. Um, and, and put pressure on a guy like Logan, who we've seen, or at that point had seen, had been susceptible to a little bit more of a forward uh, pressure fighter that, that's going to gas him, that's going to lay on him, that's going to clinch him, that's going to throw big shots at him, make him move. KSI, while he's he's doing a good job of, of, of implementing pace, he is chasing a little bit here. And that's why he's getting tagged with some of these little cheeky shots from Face Sensei. That he's walking right into jabs, and then Sensei's kind of rolling under shots, slipping out of the way and, and getting to the other parts of the ring. I would say Face Sensei's footwork here is better than than anyone that I've seen on on YouTube so far. That's that's Jake, that's Logan Paul, all those guys included. He's very crisp, he's very tight in his footwork, um, and he's floaty. Now this is round one, and they are just sparring, 
but his footwork just to be able to to be on balance in all in all points of the fight at all points he's not overthrowing he's not overshooting and he's he's not ever on the back foot where he can't recover he's fighting well going backward utilizing his jab um this is some of the cleanest footwork i've seen and ksi was trying to walk him down he's another jab there's there's a nice jab to the body one two there we go ksi ah i like this Yes, I starting to unload a little bit. And and throwing in bunches here. Getting in close combinations. Body shot, uppercut, left hook. Body shot, uppercut, left hook. That's that's kind of his combo. And then KSI gets tagged a little bit there and gets tagged with the right hand. Listen to what Vidal says. Listen right here. Walk in with the jab. Don't just walk in and watch KSI just walk in and get caught with the right hand. Bang. See that? It's so hard to learn a sport like boxing. Be good at it and understand what you have to do to protect yourself at all times. And what Vidal's trying to tell KSI there is just don't walk in to range. You're going to get clipped walking into range. Walk in with that jab. Touch him first. Give him something to think about when you're coming into range so that, that doesn't happen. So that you don't get countered with a big right hand or you don't get caught with an uppercut or a hook as you just walk in. Just kind of trying to get to your range, trying to put that pressure on. Because pressure for pressure's sake isn't good enough. Guys that understand how to fight going backward, guys like Jake, guys like Faze Sensei, are going to make you pay for that kind of stuff. You can't just walk into range. We saw it with Jake and Nate Robinson. He tried to sprint right at Jake and got just absolutely mowed down. That's not the way this is going to work. You've got to be able to, to set something up. You've got to be able to provide some sort of resistance. If you're going to move forward, they're going to try to keep you off them. Now, how do you, how do you counter that while also moving forward? It isn't just walking into range. It's finding a way to utilize the jab to get there, cut an angle, uh, get inside, rip the body, and then then you start to now move them backwards. Then you start to position them where you want them in the ring. Now, I don't think KSI is, is registering these shots, but if they're hit with 10-ounce gloves, no headgear, and Jake cracks him with one of those, that's that's not going to feel too good. Not saying he can't take it on the chin, but I'm saying you don't want to. No matter how many you can take, you don't want to. This is a one-take instance, but if you, you keep finding a little bit of these one-takes where KSI is completely wide open, he's just relying on the fact that he can move forward on guys and pressure them and, and take shots. If you go back and watch the Logan fight, he didn't have to take many shots. He took one big one, uh, and, and that one dropped him, or it would have dropped him in my opinion. But you can't do this kind of stuff uh, with a guy like Jake, I don't think. I don't think you can do this kind of stuff and just kind of walk into his range because, again, we saw what happened when Nate tried. <laughs> it all said he don't like getting hit. I don't care how nice he is. He don't like getting hit. That's so funny. Dang, man. That's his boy Sensei, though. What the heck? All right, round two. Here we go. KSI moving a lot better here. More motivated here, it looks like. More more uh, put together. Not a lot of wasted movement. He's trying to cut off the ring. He does have a good understanding of where he needs to be as far as keeping this pressure on. Now, I like this. Just wading his way in. Faint, faint. Even though that it's just a kind of high-low faint, he's still fainting his way in. And since they doing the same back to him. Hey! Not bad. Not bad, little combination. He's drawing movements out of Sensei just by coming in on him. This is good. This is good work. Look at that. Look at that reaction he draws out of face Sensei just by moving forward on him. He draws out the parry. Look at the right hand, ready to parry the jab. I mean, obviously... <laughs> Sensei hears the coaches yelling, jab, 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 so it makes sense. But he feints that jab, and that now look at what's open. Now he's looking for that jab, sliding out of the way to his right. If KSI had, has moved in and, and feints that jab, and afterward he gives that pop and comes over the top with that left hook, now we're in business now. But again, KSI still moving forward. The whole time moving forward. You're starting to see the benefit of what KSI does. A guy like Faye Sensei is, is starting to be backed up into the corners where he is still controlling a lot of the exchanges, but he's having a hard time getting away from him. He's now having a hard time dictating when when the exchanges start. He can still end them. He can still get out of the way and get a shot in here or there and you know put his stamp of approval on it, but he's still having a rough time as KSI starts to, to corner him. And then every time he does it, KSI is landing a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. The only thing I would say is a major problem is how, how big of a tell he has behind his right hand or if he wants to throw the big right hand. It's coming. You can see it. We all can see it. Yes, of course, the cardio that he has become known for 
Uh, you want to make sure that you can keep Jake on the back foot, pressure him, but also do it in a way that is is not telling. You're not just throwing massive right hands. You're not just walking into range, right? It would have been so easy, guys, for Vidal, who is not nearly the, the level of YouTuber or stardom or fame that KSI is, to, to kind of pack this in and be like, yeah, yeah, you're doing great, man. Here, here's your water. Doing great, man. Here's your water. This guy, as a friend even, has kept it more real with his corner than I'm sure Shannon Briggs kept it with Logan in their fight because he's telling him, listen, this isn't going to cut it. This 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 head hunting, uh, not not jabbing our way in, not not giving any kind of threat when we come into range, um, you know, kind of letting him out of the corner. We have to keep the pressure on him. You have to hit him in the body, in the chest. Find ways to hit him because he's slipping all your shots when you head hunt. He's keeping it real with his fighter, man. That could have been a big difference in the Logan fight. The fact that these guys were, were in Vegas for months and months and months, grinding this thing out and being being honest about it. You know, when when there was an issue and you hear him talking to KSI, are you listening to me? You're not listening. Are you listening? Put your hands down. Breathe. Don't do that. Larry told you to do this. Listen. Do what he tells you. Like, he's being honest with the guy and he's doing it in a way a coach should. I don't know if Logan got that in his camp. On fight night, it showed because when someone needed to dig down deep and win that last round, KSI came for it. The man came for it. Little right hand off the break. Okay, KSI. Hey. Again, not the most technical, but he's he's throwing out there. And he's keeping up the work rate. The work rate is what I'm impressed with. I'd be dead tired at this point. He was putting this pressure on me. I'd be so tired. And look at, look at. Bay Sensei starting to get a little wobbly on the legs. The tires are starting to blow out a little bit. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This is how you weaponize your cardio. This is how you weaponize your pace. Ah, nice little hook to the body. There it is. Okay, not bad. Round three, not bad. KSI definitely looked better in that round. I'd say it's 2-1 phase. I think KSI dominated that round. And they want that right hand to the body. Cut the ring. Don't follow. Wants him to start trapping him in the corner here. Okay. Don't forget what I said. Don't get happy. Jab to the body. Okay. A little. Oh. A little right hand. Okay. KSI. Got to leap in with the left hook and the right hand behind it. Nice. Right hand to the body. And then goes upstairs with it. That's what we're looking for. Hey, right hand behind it. Hey, uppercut. I want you guys to listen at this. They're not celebrating KSI knocking down Faye Sensei. They're not like, yeah, good job. Woo. They're still coaching in the moment. This is high level coaching from, from both guys. From uh, Vidal, and I'm not sure his other trainer's name. I apologize. But that's the type of stuff that you're looking for in camp. You're not supposed to be celebrating KSI knocking down Faye Sensei. Hit him with a nice body shot, by the way. Uppercut landed that that final shot that put him kind of put him down, but I think the body shot really did it. We're gonna go back and watch this. Listen to what Vidal and and the other trainer are saying to KSI immediately once he knocks him down. They're getting him, they're wanting him to hustle to that corner. They want to simulate what would happen should he knock Logan down and have him prepared for it on fight night. They don't want to have him knock Logan down and not know what to do and possibly you know maybe he doesn't get those couple of seconds and Logan gets another another two or three or four to to recover. And I don't remember that happening, but just the coaching ability to be able to to recognize yeah your fighter's done something well but let's condition him to understand this is normal this is something we want him to think is normal once he does this it's not like he just he just saved the world like this is this is another day in the office for the guy let's treat it like it just the pressure forward now we start ripping body shot right hand over the top right hand right hand body shot right hand body right hand beautiful Hear that? Hustle, hustle, hustle to the neutral corner. Hustle. Good spar, man. Good spar. KSI dropped him with a body shot. Well done, man. Well done. Uh, he went to the body three straight times. Body, right hand, body, right hand, body. And dropped him with that last one. Beautiful stuff. Well done from both guys, man. Well done. Very impressive. The game plan is going to be the same. And if you think it's not, you're crazy. They're going to go out there and try to get Jake tired. They're going to push him and push him and push him. And to some extent, they're going to hope that KSI's chin can hold up to Jake's power because it, I'm sure 
in the time that he's been training, he is, you know, continuing to learn. He's finding ways to, to utilize these new techniques. But at some point, he's going to get hit. And he's going to get hit hard if, if he continues just to walk into range like that. I'm not saying he will, but if he does. And we're going to see if, if KSI's chin can hold it. Because, again, Logan didn't really touch him. He hit him one time clean with the, with the right hand. And when he did, it almost put him down. This was a fun spar, man. This was good to see because KSI's pressure is is legendary in the YouTube boxing scene. He is putting it on everybody, and he put it on Faye Sensei. I would say to that point, pretty even fight. That was, what was that, sparring round number four? It was either four or five, and it, I had it 2-1 to Faye, so KSI was was definitely turning the tide there, and it would have been 2-2, but KSI drops him. He wins the spar. Um, he definitely was coming on stronger in, in rounds three and four and probably would have continued that on to, to five, six, however many they wanted to go, so... Big ups to KSI, man. Big ups to KSI. I, I wanted to show you guys this because I thought it was interesting. And it's not necessarily Jake's next opponent. Probably not, actually, because we have Dylan Dennis in the wings. We have some other people that are being thrown around out there. KSI is not, apparently not fighting till late next year, maybe even 2022, according to you guys. So, you know, this, this thing we can come back to as we move forward and, and see if he's improving any, if we get any new sparring footage. But it was here. You guys wanted me to react to it. I did. If I had to use one word to describe KSI's fighting style, it is unrelenting. It's a big word, I know. I know. But the only question left we have to ask is, can Jake handle that kind of pressure? You guys let me know.